I know what you're thinking. Is Chase selling out? Did he just post a video with a shirtless thumbnail? Well, yes. Yes, I did. But you clicked on it. So who's really to blame here? But if you take a minute and just look at these photos of me awkwardly flexing in my home office, would you look at that? You'll see that I'm not 5% body fat or something crazy. I have that physique that allows me to have a worry-free slice of cake at my cousin's birthday party without ruining everything. FYI, I currently weigh in at just above 150 pounds or about 69 kilograms. Today I'll be showing you guys what a full day of eating would look like in order for me to lose weight. And no, I won't be taking any supplements, I won't be doing any time-restricted eating, I won't be rubbing any exotic lotions on my skin, I will just be in a calorie deficit. I'll be eating in a deficit of 300 to 500 calories. Any deficit larger than that is just kind of asking for trouble. I mean short-term results and potential relapses or binges. Side note, if what you're currently doing to lose weight feels overly restrictive and unsustainable, then it probably is. My maintenance calories are just around 2,300 per day. That's just my body weight in pounds times 15. We'll subtract 300 to 500 calories for the daily deficit, and that'll give us about 1,800 to 2,000 calories for a day of weight loss. I don't worry too much about the macros, the protein, carbs, and fats within these calories. I just try to hit a minimum protein target of one gram per pound of body weight. You wanna lose body fat, not muscle mass. So keep up the protein and keep up the strength training. Protein has also been proven to be the most satiating macronutrient, so this is great to have when dieting or cutting if you have an absurd appetite like me. So everybody is freaking out about carbs and fats these days, I say, don't overthink it. Just make sure to get at least 25% of your daily calories from fat because it is essential for many, many functions of the human body. Guys, eat some fat. Fats are not evil. Carbs are not evil. Make food, not war. At the end of the day, getting and staying lean is all about developing habits and routines that work for you. If this full day of eating doesn't seem like something you could do, then do not do it. I don't have the answer. I just have an answer. And the answer is specific to my routine. It's what I can do. A strange part of my routine right now involves getting up and eating the same exact thing for breakfast every single morning. And although that might sound boring, I actually think it's the highlight of this video. I think it's my favorite recipe I'm gonna share today. And it just so happens that I erased all the footage from the first time I tried to eat breakfast on camera. So we're gonna start this full day of eating at lunch, then have dinner, then have a snack, then we're gonna have breakfast the next morning. And that'll be the total calories because breakfast never changes and audience retention time. So let's eat lunch. Yesterday. Boom. All right, so what did we just make? We made ourselves a little bit of an egg wrap. It's like an omelet in a wrap. Mm. It is good. That mustard and that sriracha go together so well. Partners in crime. Funny thing, this meal came out to exactly 400 calories. And this meal is mostly protein. And there's a couple things along the way that we did to make that possible. I'll walk you through the whole process because I just burnt my mouth on the first half of this and I need to take a break before continuing. So I like to start by cutting up all my vegetables. Then I get those simmering. So we're heating up the pan ahead of time. This is a nice uh, avocado pan. It's really, really non-stick in nature. I'm gonna hit it with a quick extra virgin olive oil and um, we're gonna start cooking. I used this uncured turkey bacon. Yeah, that's the Walmart special. We don't always shop at Walmart, but we did last time, and uncured turkey bacon is always gonna be a great option to cut down on tons of unnecessary fat or unnecessary sugars that could be in other bacon. So I added two slices of the turkey bacon, and then on top of that, I just added regular deli turkey because I wanted a little more meat. While that's simmering, I like to add seasonings. I add salt, pepper, paprika, cayenne, garlic. How much? I don't know, it's your discretion. I'm not gonna say you add a quarter teaspoon of this and an eighth teaspoon of that. Then once all that's simmering for a while and it's to your desired doneness, you throw in the egg whites. And we're just going with the classic Bob Evans. I'm just using half a carton of Bob Evans egg whites just because it makes this recipe faster and way higher protein. And we're going with half the carton and that's a majority of the protein for the meal. And to substitute for the yolk being absent, I add a ton of this nutritional yeast. So a serving of this stuff is 16 grams. I, I use probably about five grams in the whole recipe. It's like a low calorie, high protein, dare I say vegan alternative for cheese pretty much. It's a byproduct of wine making, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, don't listen to me, I'm not an expert. Once the eggs look cooked and almost at an omelet consistency, I put one of these wraps on top. 
These are low carb wraps. I don't eat them because they're low carb, but I more so choose them because they're lower calorie and loaded with fiber. 90 calories per wrap. On other wraps, you might be well above 200. Just an excellent option for wraps. Then comes the moment of truth, the flip, which I actually screwed up the flip on camera. I'm sorry guys, I, I totally botched that one. But then once you flip it, you cover it with a little more nutritional yeast. I like to sprinkle on some sriracha and mustard. I'm not crazy, if you haven't mixed sriracha and mustard, you're wrong. Not to mention, they are both zero calorie dressings. I know they're not really zero calories, but they are such low calorie that it's almost insignificant to count. Then I throw on a little bit of spinach, wrap it over and cover it up and let that spinach wilt for a little while while I do my cleanup and then we eat. Mmm, it's hot damn. La Tortilla Factory, they make an excellent wrap. These things are delicious. That's one of those meals that is it's just so surprising that it clocks in at only 400 calories. Like, I feel like if you made some different choices, you'd be looking at like a six, 700 calorie meal with way less protein. But I just think it's a great tasty option for lunch, brunch, dinner, anything, you name it. There are no rules. Do what you want. Eat breakfast foods for dinner. Twirl, sit, other way. Good girl. Oh. Snacking, huh? Mabel's on the bulk. So if you get hunger pangs throughout the day, a surprising amount of the time, it's just because you're thirsty. So do yourself a favor and carry around a water bottle all day, but also if you wanna go the extra mile, carbonated water really fills you up. I like to add ACV to it, apple cider vinegar, and maybe a couple drops of stevia if you're in the mood for something sweeter, but the ACV really gives it like a kombucha style feel. And there are a ton of health benefits to apple cider vinegar that you can debate about in the comments if you want to, but I just like it for the taste. You can also have coffee, you can also have tea, anything zero calorie that's basically water works. I'm gonna get back to work for a little bit and we'll check in later. Later that same evening. Boom, so we just worked for a few hours. Today is a work day, but it is not a work out day. Um, I just clocked out of my day job and now I'm gonna find a way to get active on my day off from the home gym. While we're talking fitness routines, I will say that for the past couple of weeks, I've been doing my own fitness routine that I developed for the quarantine, which I'll link up here in the description below. But recently I just purchased a program from the guys over at Mind Pump called Maps Anywhere, which I think is an excellent program that you guys will get a taste of probably after breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> but even on my days off from the home workouts, I still like to be pretty active. I still like to hit my 10,000 steps. I still like to do a yoga routine. I I still like to go for walks and I always try to squeeze in some form of exercise that I enjoy. So I found this really cool trail. I'm gonna go for a four mile hike that is primarily uphill. That'll surely work up an appetite and then it'll be time for dinner for me and Mabel and um, we'll see you then. some dinner. Relax. So we were back from a pretty decent hike. I love incorporating that kind of movement into my day because I always tell people that the fun exercise that you will do is a lot better than the optimal exercise that you will not do. So whatever it is you enjoy that gets you moving, do that. During the quarantine, I'm working from home, so typically I'm eating a pretty similar thing for breakfast and lunch so that my dinners can be a little more relaxed, a little different every day because me and my girlfriend typically make dinner and it can be anything. I like to have that flexibility by having healthier, lower calorie, higher protein options throughout the day. But she's not around tonight, so it's just me, and that means I'm gonna have myself a bachelor's dinner, the leftover supreme. So I'm like a human garbage disposal. Basically, when I'm cooking dinner for myself, I just look in the fridge, I, I play around with the ingredients in my head, I say, how can these things work together in a way that makes a meal, and then I make it. So tonight we're going for a spicy take on a tuna salad sandwich, accompanied with a large salmon salad. 
For the tuna salad sandwich, I have this mixture right here. I just mixed one regular ass can of tuna with a little bit of mustard, a little bit of sriracha, a little bit of horseradish, I think some garlic, some Old Bay, a little bit of soy sauce, all really lower calorie options. And recently I scored some leeks at my camp. Leeks are like wild growing green onions. So I chopped some of those up and uh, mixed them right in. It's gonna go pretty nicely. Now a sandwich would be a... Now a sandwich is... Mabel, come here. Now a sandwich is not a sandwich without bread. It's just really messy finger food. So for bread, we're going with some regular ass bread. If you don't have a gluten intolerance and you know of an awesome local bakery, that is usually the best way to get your bread on. Contrary to most shelf breads, this bread is very airy, very thin cut, pretty damn small. It comes out to only around 50 calories a slice or so they say. I'm not gonna say that, you know, the Food and Drug Administration is checking up on Kaleri's Bakery from Dubois, Pennsylvania, but I'm gonna say even if they are fudging the numbers a bit, this local bread is a pretty decent option. Also saved a little bit of romaine to put on the sandwich, and that brings us into the salad. So we're gonna have us a big ass salad on a bed of romaine. On top of the romaine, I'm probably gonna empty out about half of this bag of frozen vegetables. We got a solid mix of cauliflower, broccoli, and carrots. Guys, don't be afraid of frozen vegetables. We're also gonna use a little bit of homemade horseradish dressing. Now, you can make a dressing however you want for the base of this dressing. I used just over a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar, and in it, I mixed probably about a teaspoon of mustard, probably about a teaspoon of soy sauce, just a dash of Walden Farm syrup, just to get a little bit of sweetness in there, and then I added a ton of horseradish. I have a pretty weak horseradish right here from Dick's. Then I threw a little bit of cracked pepper in there as well. Then we're gonna toss on this leftover tomato from this morning. We're gonna saute the rest of that onion from this morning, and then we're gonna crack an egg and toss a fried egg on this salad. And then it wouldn't be a salmon salad without the salmon. So in the microwave, I'm just gonna heat up yesterday's leftover salmon filet, which is only about 100 grams of salmon. And hey guys, if you are weighing protein, make sure you weigh it before you cook it because the weight does change. So I'm gonna whip up the rest of this meal, probably eat it outside, soak up a little bit of sun, and we'll touch base later. hours later. So it's been a few hours since dinner time and we've eaten really low calorie today. We have a lot of room left for a, a late night snack. So we are gonna do my take on protein ice cream. Now I know everybody and their mother has a recipe for their own protein ice cream. This is mine. So whenever you make protein ice cream, I like to start by mixing all the dry ingredients first, which you can see I've done here. The base of this is whatever whey protein isolate you want to use. Quarter teaspoon of xanthan gum, 10 grams of coconut flour, five grams of chia seeds, 10 grams of PB2, and then literally as much cinnamon as you want. And then in here we have the wet ingredients. I have 100 grams of frozen blueberries, 100 grams of frozen strawberries, a half a cup of cashew milk, and a pretty good dollop of vanilla extract. I like to shoot for around 300 grams of ice or whatever I can fit in the Ninja Nutribullet. Then for toppings, we have 35 grams of bananas and 15 grams of Magic Spoon Blueberry Flavor Cereal. So over many, many makings of the protein ice cream, I've learned that I shouldn't just add it straight to the food processor. First, blend all my frozen ingredients in the Ninja Nutribullet right here. And then once that's done, I add it to the food processor along with the dry ingredients. Then once it's out of the food processor, you can go ahead and add your toppings. I got some banana, I got some Magic Spoon cereal, which if you don't know about Magic Spoon, get out of the rock you are living under. I don't know, it's like people these days, there's this whole myth that you have to grow up, get a real job, stop eating cereal, and that's just not the way it is. You can grow up, you should still get a, you should still get a job but you can keep eating delicious cereal. And this cereal is high protein, low calorie deliciousness, and the blueberry flavor is the best. And I'm not just saying that because I'm affiliated with them, but 
I am. So if you're interested in Magic Spoon and you want to support these productions, please check them out and use promo code Chase Baron at checkout for a discount of sorts. Without further ado, let's get annoying. So can you see how that's just nice and goopy? It's it's like it's like an Italian ice right now. So that is the beauty of protein ice cream. It is super satiating, super voluminous, super low calorie. This whole thing clocks in at like 375 calories. Yeah, it's a little ridiculously high volume, but if you're struggling with late night food cravings, you will not be hungry after this. Probably not as good as normal ice cream, but it's pretty damn close. Definitely close enough for me, but most people would probably want to add more sweetener. The combination of the blueberry magic spoon and the blueberry ice cream is just delicioso to me. Trust me, this is not the first time I've made this. Ask my neighbors, they probably think I'm super annoying. They must think I'm like sanding in here. I have some kind of wood shop, but really I'm just making high volume, low calorie ice cream. Anyway, to pass time during this quarantine, I've been converting all of our old VHS tapes to digital files and sending them to my family, which has been really awesome. I'm gonna eat this ice cream. Mabel's gonna eat this frozen Kong, buddy. And we're gonna watch some home movies. Come on, bud. Tastes good. What are you eating? Uh, lasagna. Uh, boom. Uh, that feels very gluttonous, but it feels very good in my tummy. It looks like the total on calories, according to my fitness pal, it's about 1,733. But I think that a lot of food labels do underreport their calories. So I'm gonna go ahead and jack this up in my head a little bit. So I'm gonna estimate that today was around 1,800 calories, and that's even including calories from the spray olive oil. And I even threw in a couple tablespoons of mustard throughout the day just to add some calories. And it's still clocking in at only 1,733. And I had a ton of volume of food today. Like, I've been pretty damn full all day. Anyway, looks like Mabel is ready for bed. So I'm gonna go to bed as well. And you'll see breakfast in the morning. Early the next morning. Are you recording audio? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> The birds are chirping and Mabel is barking, which means it is time for breakfast. So as I said earlier, I eat pretty much the same thing for breakfast every morning right now. It's an interesting take on oatmeal. I like to eat my oats pretty savory. Do yourself a favor, buy your oatmeal in this giant tub. Just don't get the stuff in the packets. That pretty much just like a pureed pop tart in a bag. So we're gonna go with a half cup or about 40 grams of oats. Probably throw in a good quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon of salt. You'll notice I'm using Redmond's Real Salt. It comes from an ancient mine in Utah, really dense in minerals. Also just the best tasting. Try this out. Then we're back at the yeast. You know, what a great way to start the day with some yeast. So I throw in about five grams of nutritional yeast. Quite a few cracks of regular pepper. Twist it. A couple little sprinkles of garlic. So you want to give those a little mix, and I treat my oats kind of like I treat Legos. I don't read the instructions. I like to add boiling water straight to the instant oats. You want to add a full cup of water for every half cup of oats. It's a two to one ratio. I'm just going to eyeball it. I kind of add a little more. I like them a little soupy. I'm weird. As you can see, that's what it'll look like right now. Definitely soupier than we want to eat, but that's when we toss it in the microwave for a minute. So you can see already out of the microwave, these oats are really starting to absorb that water, but there is still a lot of potential in these oats. These oats are like young high school grads. They could go on to be anything. Today, they're gonna go on to be egg drop oatmeal. Then you just wanna stir the whites around without breaking the yolks. So you can see now that the egg whites are all distributed, but the yolks are not yet broken. And we're gonna to toss this back in the microwave for one more minute. Those oats are gonna absorb even more of the water. So while that was in the microwave, I prepared myself my favorite morning beverage besides coffee, which I can't have right now for 30 days. 
damn it, stupid challenges. This is creatine, apple cider vinegar, lemon, lime, and a little bit of cayenne for a little bit of that extra kick. And what a better way to start your day than popping some pills. So with this, I'm gonna take some fish oil, some vitamin D, and some vitamin C. That's the morning routine. Mm. So here's the consistency we're working with now. This is what you're going for. You want that, that good morning goop, but you also want those yolks to be able to still be cracked. You know, you wanna cook those egg whites, but then you wanna crack those yolks and mix them around and make it all yolky. You wanna make it nucleus. But we haven't even added the secret ingredient of this dish yet. A hefty little pour of everything bagel seasoning. Mm, we are going the distance today. Oh, that's it right there. It's like painting with embryos. It is so creamy, so delicious. If you've never tried a savory approach to oatmeal, this is gonna rock your world. Tastes damn good. A giant cup of oatmeal is like 350. A carton of eggs these days is like 130. You do a little math. If I was on a budget, I would eat this every day. And I'm not on a budget, and I still eat it every day. I'll eat that at 7 a.m. and I'll be full until noon. Everybody's like, all fats, all carbs. When you eat something that just has a balanced macronutrient profile, that might keep you full. Everybody's different, but for me, this works. 12 seconds later. Welcome to my home gym slash laundry room. So I'm just gonna do my morning yoga followed by a workout. Let's zen out. So thanks so much for tuning in guys. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you are new. And until next time, remember to make food, not war.